Thank you, Mr Chairman. I want to start with saying some things that I agree with on, on what I've just heard. I agree that education materials in our schools should be made public. I agree with that in all subjects, actually. I think not just in schools. I think of the scandal in universities, how you have academic journals behind paywalls and you can't actually look to see what academics are researching in this country on public money without paying huge amounts of money. So I totally agree on that point. I totally agree that we needed better guidance from the government on this issue. And in fact, when we introduced RSE, um, uh, RSHE, one of the big problems was the government guidelines were late and delayed. And some of the problems that we saw, I believe, in places like Birmingham, where parents were protesting outside of schools, if you remember, was because there wasn't clear enough guidelines. And in fact, it often gave too much in the hands of teachers to have to negotiate with parents rather than the department protecting teachers by saying these are exactly the things that you should be covered. And I totally agree that we need to have a, a discussion that is um, facilitated in schools, an education that is facilitated in schools with subject specialists. It is an ongoing scandal that we have biology teachers teaching this wide area, for example, when, as the Honourable Member has said, this is so much more than, you know, kind of the metaphorical condom on the banana that you have in the last year of secondary school. It is about the relationship, the emotional, the mental health. So I totally agree. And actually, the inclusion of this as a wider citizenship, an RSHE um, portfolio, where we developed an education um, pathway for trainee teachers in the last Labour government was important and the destruction of citizenship education and therefore the training of teachers who are specialised in those kinds of areas under the last 10 years has been a great failure and I know there are some reversal of that but I'm afraid that is the situation we are in now. We have less subject specialists in citizenship and RSHE because of those choices that were made in 2010 but I agree on the principle that we need to reverse that. But where I disagree, I'm afraid, is on some of her examples. And I will give you, I, I didn't plan to say this, but during the pandemic, my cousin, second cousin, 15-year-old boy, died. And he died in a very tragic accident um, of auto-asphyxiation. And it devastated the family, which you can imagine. And it was in the pandemic where we were only allowed six people at the funeral. If he had been taught about risky sex acts, actually, and he was 15, he wasn't, he's not a kind of prepubescent child. If he was taught about risky sex acts and how to make sure he did things safely, rather than just learning something from the internet that then led to the end of his life, he might be still around and his family might not be devastated. So actually, I do have a problem with saying that we shouldn't teach any of this to our children because of that personal experience. And so when the Honourable Member picks out examples of the dice or whatever, which might sound frivolous, and, and, and I can't judge on exactly how it was played out in those schools, and she might well be right, it was played out by some teachers incorrectly, but the principle of learning about things before you're able to do them, and, but where you are, before you are legally able to do them, but when you are physically able to engage in them, which 15-year-olds are, I'm afraid, to me, could have been life-saving. And I know my sister, who is a teacher in her school in Essex, has worked very hard to try and incorporate some of those teaching methods in their RSHE. Focused on age specific, focused on stories of people like my cousin and others, that we can talk about the dangers of some of these things. You can't talk about the dangers of things if you don't talk about them. If you say that it's just something that families need to talk about, because I'm afraid most families won't talk about those kinds of things because they're darn embarrassing for parents to talk about. 
but also you just never think that your child will do something like that. So I disagree with the, the, that element of what we heard today. I do agree that there needs to be oversight, and I do agree that there needs to be checks to make sure that we're not just promoting risky activities. We need to be talking about the risks of risky activities. And then when people are of age, they can make their own choices. But I also want to reflect on the things that I was planning to say in this debate uh, in the last few seconds uh, to, to say. The UK Youth Parliament ran a campaign for years to try and get RSHE better taught. And it was about emotional elements and it was about relationships and it was also about LGBT inclusive education. And that does include T. We have seen FINA's latest ruling that you will not be able to swim unless you've transitioned until you, before you are 12. And so we are in a very difficult, complex world where we have to now navigate this. I think broad brush um, uh, bans from the department are unhelpful. We need to be content specific, school specific. The department needs to show more leadership, but we cannot have exclusion of talking about trans people in schools. We cannot have exclusion of talking about these complex issues in schools because I'm afraid it will be very dangerous. Thank you.